met Jonas at the Battle of the Paddle Brazil in 2014. I went out there and I remember seeing this guy out on the water and I was like, what? I remember in the elite final, it was pretty nasty conditions. It was windy, wavy, and just getting out was a chore. I remember getting out off the start and getting clean of everybody, but eventually I got got round of the buoy and got cleaned out by a set. After that race, I remember seeing Jonas come in and like, I'm like, wow, that guy paddled in those conditions out through that surf and back. That's something. Yeah, that's how I met him. I remember calling Anthony and saying, Dude, there's this guy, like he's out there and he, he doesn't have any arms and he's catching waves on his race board. And I, I think he kind of thought he was maybe just like, oh, maybe he's out there, he's just doing it. And then he saw the pictures and saw him and he's like, oh my goodness, this guy is like, for real. I was amazed and at the same time, it, it was so very interested to get the story and to get to know him because, um, you know, so many people that have overcome things like that, you know, they, they they, te they tend to be extraordinary people, and you know, Jonas is, has uh, basically followed in that line, you know, of Bethany Hamilton, and just able to overcome, but not just in live life, you know, but to like celebrate life and to celebrate all the different things that he loves to do. You know, when when tragedy happens in life and and big things happen, you can either do go one of two ways. I think you either turn towards God or you turn away from God. And Jonas had every excuse and every reason to, you know, maybe even be angry at God. Yeah, I always surf in my entire life. I, I surf since I uh, was, when I began, began to surf like uh, 13 years old. I think when we are surfing, we become younger and younger. It's like come back and, and, and really become a children again. Like, I feel like a kid, you know, there and uh, it's so, so magic and it's not a sport for me. <laughs> putting a, a sign in my church was a voluntary job, and boom, I got this shock 13,800 votes. <laughs> It's a lot of things, you know, and uh, well, my, my arms, my, my hands was burning in that moment and I have to cut off. And I look for my long board and my short board and say, well, I'm never gonna surf again. I grew it with my dad. He always was my best friend, always. I said for my dad, Dad, I, I go into the beach, I will try to surf again. And he says, yeah, I am nuts, man. You, you, you can do this. And I stay trying, keep trying like one year. But when I get in the, the wave, I catch the wave. So when I drop, you know, when I try to stand up on the board, I fall, and when I got this one, like, I don't know, one feet away, one feet away, <laughs> and I got it, and I, and I, I tried to don't fall, and I got it, and I got it, I got it, I got it, and when I, that way finished, I look to the, to the sand, and look to my, my friends there fine. too, and I see, did you see it? My, was like the life come back to my to me, you know, that all that happy to be in the ocean surfing and and get back to my heart and I said, yeah, I'm back, I'm here. I restart from my entire life and in that day everything uh, began. Finding the stand up paddle a way to get back to the ocean and get back to surf and uh, yeah, I have this idea. Uh, made a pedal adaptation pedal and uh, I talked to my dad my dad says to me I don't think this is gonna happen I don't think this is gonna work actually so 
I try to do and I do my first pedal and uh, yeah, it happened. So there was that magic moment where he won the, um, the repercharge round and you know, beat four other guys in an epic battle to the finish and you know, the who's who of stand up all over the world was there. There was this one heat where he came down, he was close to the leaders in the group, but they all fell in the first big drop. He landed the drop, made it, got around the buoy clean, was the only one of the bunch that made it and started heading down the river. I mean, everybody was just like, yeah, Jonas. Like, it was like one of those moments, I mean, I get teared up thinking about it now. It was so, inspiring to see what he did that day. But ask anybody that was there. If you were there and you're present, you saw something great that day, that's for sure. After the event was over, I went up to, you know, say hi again and, um, and asked if I could have a closer look at his paddle, what he was using. And he literally had two steel rings attached to the paddle. And that's how he was able to get his arm through it. I, I certainly knew that there was a, at that time he was using just a regular handle on the top. So I knew that that needed to be changed. It's something that he could get his arm situated in better to have better control of the blade and to know that he's not gonna lose control of the paddle. The way I learned how to make a better paddle for him was I actually, okay, if I'm gonna make a paddle for Jonas, I need to paddle like he does. So I literally stuck my arm through the rings and held the paddle and paddled in my paddling flume I took it out paddling, so the first prototype I made sure that if it's not good enough for me, it's not going to be good enough for him, that's for sure. Two months, three months after he called me and he sent me a video with the pedal almost ready and I see, oh man, this is awesome, I, I can't believe it, it's ready and uh, yeah, it was like we started this, this relationship. I was there on the, on the roof, I, I don't know man. It was very, very tough to, to cross this, this bridge for another life, but yeah, it was a bridge for a better life. And today, yeah, today, today I, can, I, I can't imagine a better life than what I, I have today. Jonas is living God's purpose for his life. He's, he has a new life. <laughs> what, what many would think is maybe a disadvantage has become his lampstand. And, you know, he wanted to be a pro surfer and then went on to do what he was doing with um, his work in graphic design and, and then with the church. And all of a sudden you have this, this, this traumatic injury that changes your life. Most people it would be for the, pot, for the negative. And, and for him, it was at first and he found a way to change that into a positive. He's walking the sermon and he's living it. and. He's not afraid to, to share his faith, and, and it's, it's pretty cool to see the wake that he leaves behind him. He helped me. At this point, I'd say he's probably helped me more than I helped him. Because he's, oh, he's such an inspiration. When you watch what he does and what he overcomes just in a normal day, you know, people use the term disabled. but. Jonas's abilities far exceed his disabilities. And keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours. Hana Hana is an event that I've been going to for many years. Everyone kind of kicks off their paddling year, whatever, you know, whatever craft you're paddling. The first mile in that race, I was very, very fast. You know, Jimmy, at Jimmy Terrell had already said he's, he's going to paddle with him. Candace Appleby decided she wanted to paddle with him as well. And Kyle Enney was coming back from a surf trip and participated in the event, and he ended up paddling with Jonas as well. So imagine, all of a sudden, you're paddling with these legends right next to you. I was with the best guys in the whole world, and they told me, do this and do this, and, and Ken said, she not compete to stay there with me. And, and he started just running people down. And then there was a time when I looked up and I'm going, wait a minute, we're ahead of some really good paddlers here. 
he was going good and then it was like all the way up till the top turn at the at the top when I noticed he was taking a little bit of time in between changes and I noticed something was happening with his back well he didn't say anything of course it's the I, I can't give up I can and Jim says hey man the boats here if you need it no okay Jim we, we're gonna make I said to Jonas I said Jonas think of Jesus on the cross Jesus on the cross and he's like yeah yeah okay and all of a sudden, you know, one person's cheering, Jonas, Jonas, and it starts swelling and swelling, and, you know, he, he mustered up as much as he could muster up left in his body and tried to finish, you know, looking as, 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 as resilient and strong as he could. And, and uh, it was, was incredible feeling. I will bring this for the rest of my life. Absolutely sure. And so my dad used to call it stick to and like the stick to that he showed, which took a lot more than just physical strength. And then, and I was kneeling down next to him. I said, Jonas, like, you know, it's not about where you finish. Like you've already won the race. Just by finishing this race, the example that it has given everybody else of your walk with, with God and just being that example of Christ is, is, is like you've won the race. Just something as simple as the Hawaiian shaka. He can throw a shaka with a look and a smile that says the same thing. I think this is the message. Yeah, be happy with everything what you have. Doesn't matter what happens. Doesn't matter if you, you know, you have all the reasons to be sad, but be happy, <laughs> smile. You know, I think this is the my more strongest weapon that I have is just mine. <laughs> I'm so glad for be alive again. For I, Okay, I'm praying. So I have everything what I need. So he gave me this, this, this second chance and I said, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for, for, for this chance.